Well, in 1960, for example, in 61, which was the last season in Winter League Baseball professionally in the island, the government decided not to have any more professional sports. So the, the players that were there at that time had to make a big decision to whether you continue your career in baseball or otherwise stay back in the island and try to dedicate yourself to something else. So in that situation, since I always wanted to play baseball myself, I had to leave the island to come over here to the United States, take my family out whenever I could, and I brought a lot of them from Cuba to the United States to continue my career in baseball. And that's a, a very tough decision for some of the players that had to stay back. So uh, in, in my view, I wanted to play professional baseball, and if I had that opportunity, where else better than the United States where they have the Major League Baseball, and that's the top of the line where you wanted to get to while you play in the minor leagues and prove that you can play professionally until finally it happened in 1960-61 when Cincinnati bought my contract from the Sugar King who had to move the ball club, if you remember, from Havana to New Jersey City. And then playing there two years, Cincinnati finally got my contract and my first year in the big leagues was in 1962. Now things have changed ever since then, as you well know. Because of the embargo, because of the relationship between Cuba and the United States, some of the players that were playing amateur baseball there or international uh, baseball in all over the, the, the world, uh, it was tough for them to really get an opportunity to play professional baseball. So the only way they could, they could get out of Cuba is to jump if they were international playing in Japan or in Puerto Rico or in Panama, wherever they may be, they had an opportunity to jump the ball club and stay here in the United States, when you have seen the results of those players that stay like Cespedes, like Puig with the Dodgers, uh, and a lot of them that still are coming out right now and jumping and playing professional baseball. And it's a great opportunity because they're being signed and all of a sudden they're already in the big leagues. They didn't have to go to the minor leagues and play because of they have played against great crowds, great pressure all over in those tournaments. So they were more ready than some of the kids that are here in the States in college that have to take some time in the minor league before they develop into a big leaguer. So hopefully what is going on right now is that if Major League Baseball, the uh, government in the United States and Cuba can get together some way in a pact where some of the players that are there right now in the island will be able to come to the United States and play maybe for a period of time. In, in, in 1956, what happened with the organizations is that the federal government here will give us, for example, a, a six-month visa for all the major league clubs. And then you came into the state to, from February, let's say, till about the end of September, and then you had to go back to the island. Well, maybe that is a possibility that they will come to an agreement where some of that talent that is in Cuba can come into the teams here in the United States, make it more competitive, and I think it will be great for baseball that we can have a way of getting relationship between the two countries. I think everybody will benefit from it.